Well, folks, we know the investors meeting has come and gone, and we've talked about all the news surrounding the Switch 2 and the Nintendo Direct announcement, but there was also a Q&A session that has now been officially released by Nintendo, but only in Japanese. And in this video, we're actually going to read the entirety of all of those questions and answers and show them on screen. But before we do that, I'm going to go over the short version of it, because there's some interesting, minute details on Nintendo Switch 2 in here uh, and just Nintendo's general placement in the market and their belief in what they're doing in this next fiscal year. Now, if you are already enjoying the video, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. And hey, after we go through each one of these, maybe give me your thoughts down in the comments. Let's start with the first point I want to bring up. It says, Nintendo has been expanding their teams naturally the last few years to prepare for development of software on their next system and don't believe that acquiring studios is the best way forward to expand their team. Now that's point number one, and that's really exciting. Uh, let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. Let's get on. This is the short version we're going over right now. Point number two is they know achieving 13 and a half million Switch sales will be hard, and the Switch successor will have an impact on sales, but they are committed to it, and they believe they can maintain interest enough to hit their targets. So that's obviously really good news for people that are worried about that sort of thing. Uh, their next point in this TLDR is the cash they have on hand has nothing to do with investing in the successor as they already built in that investment through their normal operations as in developing and releasing new hardware is normal and it doesn't require them to use their cash on hand to invest in it. So there you go. That's obviously an interesting point there. Let me know what you think about that down below. The next point brought up in here is Furukawa believes more people will buy digital games than physical games on the Switch successor, but that both are important avenues for Nintendo to pursue. Now, the next point they make is they admit that they need to do various initiatives to hit their hardware targets for Nintendo Switch, and they don't have Tears of the Kingdom or a Mario movie to help boost hardware sales like last year. They mentioned they did have a lot of software bundles last holiday, and they are planning other initiatives this fiscal year, and he does feel there will be ample supply of semiconductor components for launch of their new system, and that may help them resupply faster and help avoid that scalping issue that we ha know happens every single launch. Two more points Nintendo went into, and then we'll get into the actual full response so you have the entire context of these questions. No real elaboration on the Nintendo Switch successor and indicating if it means another Switch-like device. Though, and this is what I found really fascinating, an investor noted that Nintendo has used the same terminology when going from the Wii to the Wii U and the DS to the 3DS, but they did not use that when going from the Wii U to Switch, calling it a new concept of a game console. So it's notable that when Nintendo has used this terminology in the past, it's always, always been an iterative successor system. But again, Nintendo themselves didn't elaborate on that. Now, that's all fascinating. And again, let me know what you think about that point down below, because I think that's cool. The last point in this TLDR section is the annual player user count of Switch last fiscal year was 123 million players. Emphasis, they are not focused this year on growing that user count, but actually maintaining it and connecting it to their future. They don't dive into their plans behind that. We know Nintendo accounts are forward compatible. Nintendo is clearly just trying to migrate this user base over to the new system. We'll see what happens there. Now, those are the major takeaway points. But again, this entire thing is translated here over on Family Boards. So let me go ahead and get you over there so you can see the full context of everything as we read through it. All right. So you can see here, this was posted up by Pablo, and it says, question one, please tell me about your approach to game software development resources. In June, through Nintendo Direct, you plan to announce the software lineup for the latter half of 2024. But based on the lineup for the first half of this year, it seems weaker than usual. Are most of the development resources already allocated to the successor model of the Nintendo Switch? Also, please tell us about your strategy for long-term expansion of development resources. President Shintura Furukawa says, preparing for the successor model of the Nintendo Switch requires years, so it is true that various considerations are necessary for software development resources. We continue to develop software for Nintendo Switch, so please look forward to the Nintendo Direct scheduled for June for future software lineups. Furthermore, in recent years, we have continuously expanded our development resources through new graduate recruitment 
and career hiring to continue enhancing the value of our IP and proposing unique entertainment. We will actively secure the necessary development resources. Although methods like MNA are available for expanding development resources, our primary focus is to train talent within the company who understand the Nintendo brand and to cultivate future Nintendo developers together with those who have built our brand over the years. We also want to deepen collaboration with external development partners who have a deep understanding of our philosophy and game development methods. I believe that the complexity, length, and sophistication of game development are inevitable, but developing unique proposals through game development is vital to our business. So we will actively invest in expanding our development resources. All right, the next question, question two says, if the hardware sales forecast for this fiscal year ending March 2025 does not include the successor model of the Nintendo Switch, the reduction compared to the previous fiscal year ending March 2024 seems small. Do you think announcing the successor model will not affect the momentum of Nintendo Switch business? Furukawa says, the hardware sales forecast for this fiscal year does not include the successor model of the Nintendo Switch. Although the sales of the Nintendo Switch hardware have been relatively strong, we acknowledge that it has become challenging to maintain momentum as we enter the eighth year since its release. However, during last year's holiday season, particularly abroad, many new customers, including children and families, picked up the Nintendo Switch. This fiscal year, the release of new titles and the continued visibility of the Super Mario Bros. movie in various formats since its theatrical release Release, we believe new demand can still be generated. Although the announcement of the successor model and related future communications will not be entirely without impact on the Nintendo Switch sales, we aim to maintain a balanced demand for new and multiple units to maximize sales. Achieving a hardware sales forecast of 13.5 million units for the full year is not easy, but it is a challenge we are committed to at the start of the fiscal year. Then, getting on to question three, please tell us about the use of cash on hand and its relation to the Nintendo Switch successor model. At the management policy briefing in November last year, the existence of the successor model had not been announced, so it was difficult to explain the use of cash on hand in relation to the successor model. Was the scale of the amount already considering the successor model at that time? Also, does the use of cash on hand include efforts related to the Nintendo account to maintain and expand relationships with customers? Will Nintendo account continue to be utilized with the successor model? For a Kawa response, regarding the use of cash on hand, we are considering or have already implemented various measures in each area, such as accumulation of software assets and infrastructure to maintain and expand customer relationships. However, the development of the successor model of the Nintendo Switch is an investment made as part of our normal business activities. Therefore, the investment related to the successor model is not the central focus of the use of cash on hand. As for accumulation of software assets, investment in video content other than games has been prioritized at the current stage, but new investments related to games may occur in the future, potentially relating to the successor model. Additionally, infrastructure to maintain and expand customer relationships includes improving customer experience centered around the Nintendo account and creating new added value. Nintendo Systems Company LTD is a joint venture established with Dena Company LTD. It is introduced as an example of using cash on hand. The Nintendo account prepares even before the launch of the Nintendo Switch to maintain long-term customer relationships beyond hardware generations will continue to be utilized in the successor model. Question four, I believe one significant change since the launch of Switch is the notable growth in digital sales. Considering the progress and contribution of digital businesses to date, what are your expectations for the digital business in the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch successor model? Furukawa responds, as you pointed out, the expansion of the digital business scale has been one of the significant changes since the launch of Nintendo Switch. Last year, sales were strong due to additional content for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Splatoon 3, among others. And the exchange rate also contributed to the increase in digital sales and the proportion of digital sales. Our basic policy is not simply to increase the proportion of digital sales, but to maximize the sales of games software, including packaged software. 
in this context, it is necessary to improve the convenience for both customers who play packaged software and those who play downloadable versions. And we plan to continue improving and innovating in the future. Compared to 2017, when the Nintendo Switch was launched, digitalization has progressed in various aspects of our lives. I believe that as the convenience of digital content continues to increase, more customers will choose digital products for the successor model, just as they have for the Nintendo Switch. Question five. Regarding hardware sales, the forecast of 13.5 million units for this fiscal year seems quite ambitious considering the sales situation in the fourth quarter of the previous fiscal year. What measures are you considering to achieve this? Also, regarding hardware supply, you mentioned previously that you want to produce and ship a quantity that meets customer demand from an anti-resale perspective when launching new hardware. Given the recent improvements in the semiconductor market, is it possible to ship a sufficient quantity of the successor model of the Nintendo Switch from the outset. Furukawa responds, the hardware sales forecast is a bit ambitious at the beginning of the fiscal year, similar to the previous fiscal year, and is not an easily achievable number based on recent sales conditions. Last year, the momentum of hardware sales improved thanks to hits like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and the movie The Super Mario Bros. Movie, ultimately exceeding the initial forecast of 15 million units to reach 15.7 million units sold. This fiscal year, various measures will be necessary to achieve the forecasted sales of Nintendo Switch hardware. Last year's holiday sales included hardware bundled with software, and we made proposals that would make customers want to buy a second unit. This fiscal year, through various initiatives, we aim to approach the forecasted sales of 13.5 million units. Regarding the supply of the successor model of the Nintendo Switch, I cannot provide specific details since we have not discussed the launch timing yet. However, as there are no supply shortages of semiconductor parts or similar components, like in previous years, we do not anticipate the supply of semiconductor parts will be a major issue at the launch of the successor model. Question six, is there a particular intention behind referring to the successor model of the Nintendo Switch as such? Looking back at past hardware announcements, the Wii U was described as a successor to the Wii and the Nintendo Switch was introduced as a completely new concept of a game console. This time, it's described as the successor model of the Nintendo Switch. Does this expression reflect an intention to carry over the playstyle and concept of the Nintendo Switch? Also, when further information is released later this fiscal year, will there be explanations regarding the launch timing and specifications? Furukawa says, at this stage, I cannot discuss further details about the successor model of the Nintendo Switch. We judge that using the expression successor model of the Nintendo Switch was most appropriate for today's announcement. Regarding future communications, we will proceed step by step towards the launch, as we have done with previous new hardware announcements. Then on to question seven, the operating profit forecast for this fiscal year has been announced at 400 billion yen, which seems to suggest that Nintendo has been able to raise its base profit level during the transition period for hardware. I remember there was a time before the launch of the Nintendo Switch when the market expected Nintendo to achieve an operating profit of over 100 billion yen as a Nintendo-like profit. What is your current view on the level of Nintendo-like profit? Furukawa says, I am aware that many people expected us to achieve an annual operating profit of 100 billion yen, which was considered a typical revenue structure for Nintendo. However, at this point, we have not discussed a specific amount for a Nintendo-like profit. The announced operating profit forecast of 400 billion yen assumes that the hardware sales forecast was set with a bit of ambition, and the same applies to software. Therefore, if the number of software sales significantly falls short of expectations, achieving an operating profit of 400 billion yen will not be easy. We have announced this number at the beginning of the fiscal year with a commitment to challenge ourselves to achieve the sales plan. In this fiscal year, it is very important to maintain the momentum of the Nintendo Switch business through various sales strategies for hardware by introducing new software titles. In addition to that, we plan to continue communicating with customers through various initiatives, even beyond game consoles. For example, the Nintendo Museum, scheduled to open in fall of 2024, is one of the initiatives through which we aim to maintain not only the momentum of Nintendo Switch business, but also the overall momentum of our business. It will be an important 
important year to maintain the momentum of our business while preparing for the full-scale preparation of the successor model of the Nintendo Switch, which is crucial for balancing the maintenance of the Nintendo Switch's momentum and the preparation for the successor model. Therefore, this fiscal year is positioned as a year to focus on preparations for the future, sustainable growth, and long-term enhancement of corporate value, rather than being overly concerned with the profit level for a single year. Now, question eight. I think that the Super Mario Brothers movie was very effective in expanding the recognition of Nintendo IP in regions where Nintendo Switch is not sold as part of IP development efforts. I understand that movies have long produced periods and require significant investment. Is there a possibility of aiming to expand the population exposed to Nintendo IP through smaller scale video content, such as anime or short videos in the future? For a coward response, in the performance of the previous fiscal year, while the sales numbers for both hardware and software decreased, we were able to maintain the overall momentum of the business through initiatives aimed at expanding the population exposed to Nintendo IP. Despite the impact of the weak yen, the increase in revenue and profit was significantly influenced by the movie. Beyond its impact on performance, the movie played a major role in expanding the population exposed to Nintendo IP. The Super Mario Bros. movie continues to be watched by many people through video streaming services even after its theatrical release. I recognize movies as one of the very effective measures that can serve as an opportunity for customers to take interest in our games, and as previously announced, we intend to continue working on film production in the future. Nintendo Pictures Company LTD, which we made a subsidiary in 2022, is engaged in various initiatives across the video business, not just feature-length movies. Like game development, our basic policy for video content is to announce something when we have created something interesting that we are satisfied with. While the production team experiments and tries various things, we hope to inform you again when we have created something that feels successful. All right, then we get to question nine, which is the final question. It says, I understand that the annual play user count is an important metric for Nintendo. Although the sales of Nintendo Switch hardware have peaked, this metric has continued to grow since disclosure began. Do you expect this number to decrease this fiscal year? Also, will the annual play user count continue to be an important metric for Nintendo after the launch of the successor's model of the Nintendo Switch? For Akawa says, the annual play user count, one of our important metric, reached 123 million people in the most recent fiscal year, April 23 through March of 24, increasing the, from the previous year and reaching an all-time high. In 2023, new titles such as The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Bros. Wonder recorded significant sales, providing many opportunities for people to pick up and play the Nintendo Switch which also increased the annual play, or play user count. The ability to propose such software that creates these opportunities will be one of the keys to our future. This fiscal year, rather than expanding the Nintendo Switch business, it is important to maintain its momentum. We want to maintain the annual play user count at a high level while connecting it to the future. We continue to focus on the game console business that integrates hardware and software, emphasizing whether customers who have purchased our hardware continue to play games for the long term. Various opportunities, such as Christmas and birthdays when people gather, are very important for starting up software and playing games, which is crucial for healthy growth of our business. Therefore, the annual play user count, which shows how many customers have played games in the past 12 months, will continue to be an important metric. All right, folks. So that was obviously the long version of everything. I don't feel like I need to add more to it. You guys give me all your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I want to thank you guys so much for being here at Nintendo Prime. And I want to remind you, that we do have a podcast tonight discussing all of this stuff. The Switch 2, the, the Next Direct, Pokemon, a whole bunch of things being talked about tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time. We'll put a link to that down below as well and in a pinned comment in case you guys want to come in and watch the show live. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.